forgiveness. Oh yes, ho hum, I forgive you. It's okay. We can forget about it. We can start all over again. Now, do you really forgive? What does forgiveness entail? Forgiveness entails using your mind, intelligence, to erase the connotations that you have given to whatever you consider unforgivable so that you can carry on with energy that has been liberated. Now, this is exactly the field of inner alchemy, that we work with energies. So forgiveness is not a thing. Forgiveness is an imprint in your mind. When you find something unforgivable, it is the imprint in your mind connected to the social imprint or the imprint of people around you, which makes it stronger. Obviously, there are things that we would socially consider unforgivable. Um, crimes um, uh, ranging from cruelty to animals, to cruelty to people, to murders, etc. But even that is worthy of forgiveness in the sense of spiritual evolution. Now what do we do there? Recreate the feelings that are inside of you. Feel all the emotions connected to this unforgivable experience. Now undoubtedly they will be linked to a visual aspect. So recall the visual imprint of the person or condition or event. It's a lot like the introspection that we practiced as Carlos's introspection that we've applied to the inner alchemy methods. So recall the experience and recall everything that you have lived in that experience. Now again, this alludes to our studying and applying observation at each one of the levels of what we call the personal energy bodies. So the imprints on the physical body. How did I feel, respond, act? What was the impression? From the moment of the beginning of the unforgivableness, throughout the experience and afterwards. How did I move, but not just visually, which you need to allude to, but how did I feel as I was moving? At this point, you're using the physical energy body, the personal energy body in the physical energy field. So we would call it a field. So you're recalling, just like when we want to get someplace and we're late and everything in our body is like tense because our body is already moving and responding to the thought of being where you want to be. So you're tense without moving a physical muscle. All the subtle muscles in your body, and sometimes physical, are in activity. So it's the same thing with a memory. Go back there. This is why people can't forgive, because they can't go back. They don't want to go back and feel the discomfort. Feel what was engendered in that unforgivable memory that you hold. So you go back and you remember how you, your physical energy was led by your personal focus of consciousness, in other words, your attention. Then you go back to either the emotional or the mental. I like going straight into the mental first because it deactivates and has a lot to do with the emotional. So then we go into the second energy field of this unforgivable thing which is your mindset. As you're witnessing this thing or this interaction, go back to when your boss was really gross to you, to when you, when you witnessed, maybe you weren't even involved, when you witnessed a husband striking or a man striking a woman or beating a dog. Think of the thoughts that went through your mind, not just how you felt, but the thoughts that went through your mind, which are, besides a lot of curse words, <laughs> which we would normally say, you know, this son of a you-know-what, um, there's a lot of indignation that is impressed in words, very strong words, 
and languages. So what did you think? At that moment, usually, in moments of anger, even if we correct it later, there are all the impulses to become God's hand upon this earth and take justice into your hands. You know, like, go there and strangle the dog beater <laughs> or whatever. I'm trying to be funny about something which is a very natural impulse and we should actually laugh about afterwards. So this is what our impulse is and these thoughts are there. Even if you don't want them to be there, you've been well brought up and you don't allow them to be there because you're a good Christian or you're a good Hindu or you're a good whatever and you're practicing harmlessness. They are there. They're there from the source underneath your personality, what we call the elemental. I mean, I'm trying to be not too technical. Then, once you've awakened and remembered the thoughts like you thought them at the moment, it is easier to get in touch with all the emotions that awoke your physical energy into a different way than movement. You know that emotional energy is, a, is round, it's, it's puffy, it's, it expands, it stirs, it's movement. So with that indignation in your mind, the indignation as a feeling that arose in you and how you dealt with it, what did you do? Now you did one of two things in that moment. You exploded and you said things and did things which later you thought, well, maybe I should have controlled myself a little bit. Or you did nothing and you bottled it up and you swallowed it in and it stayed in your body. So this is what we call unforgivable. So what's all this stuff about? Let us forgive one another and let's forgive and practice forgiveness. Visualize your heart and visualize, we even have a, a lovely visualization of a white luminous rose in the heart, which helps dissolve adherences. Remember, we're talking of energetic configurations in our bodies and environment that we create. This is inner alchemy. So this rose of white light will help to dissolve these adherences that go very, very, very deep and they're not just yours, they're like generational. But they don't work alone, and they don't work miracles. Miracles don't work unless you move your energy and you accept responsibility for your here and now and your body as it is now. So don't expect a miracle from praying. Praying to be forgiven, take action. You can't go back in time not at this level of existence. You can't go back in time and you cannot erase that. But you can go back in time inside of yourself in an introspection, in a process of introspection. And what do you do there? You've heard me or read me many times in my blog talk about introspection. So you go back and you redo. What thoughts should I have thought? What physical movements or reactions should I have? Now the should talking is you now in consciousness, in alignment, not the big finger should from society. What could I really in all consciousness, true to myself and my integrity, could I have done in the three levels? And then you go back and you feel it. So obviously you didn't feel it at the moment, so you have to recreate it and you're working with your physical energy body. You're working with your personal energy body at the physical level. So let's say I, you know, that indignancy as a posture, as an emotion, and as a thought. So instead of this, what you do is you look at the same trigger, change, breathe, and respond in the way that you could respond if you were in control of your personal energy bodies, if you were living what you believe in. 
which is integrity, serenity, and you're not stupid and you're not going to accept it. Nobody's saying you need to swallow it, to let it pass, or that it is not correct. <clears throat> We're talking about a personal energy ecology. So at that level, we recreate with the physical ether, to use a technical term, what could have been. So you're changing the memory where? In the body, in the cells of the body, in the Akashic records <clears throat> of your own incarnation. You go back and you redo the mind and you're still looking at the same impulses, the same uh, <clears throat> impressions that made you think you bastard or whatever you think, think or say. And you look at the person, you look at the situation, your heart breaks. And this is what people avoid. Your heart breaks at the damage, at the violence, at the, what do you call, taking advantage of the weaker, at the brute force. It hurts. And in that hurting, change your emotions. Understand that it isn't just that dog that is being beaten, that it is you. And it isn't just that man that is beating the dog, that it is all the times that you have slammed the door shut after an argument, just thrown it with all your force. Fine, it's a door. Is it? Is it? just a door. So it's your own, a part of your own self. It's us as humanity. So it begins to change the way in which you look at things. So it begins to change your mind. Now don't go to the other extreme of, oh poor guy, poor dog, you know, and he's going to get his dues <clears throat> later in life. He's going to pay for it. No, no, no. Watch your thoughts. Cultivate thoughts which are intelligent and neutral. Okay? And then you go into the hardest part, which is changing your emotions. And this is where you have to give in to the heartbreak. Now, obviously, you're not going to start crying. Obviously, you're not going to start... I mean, you may cry in your process with yourself. But as you're recreating it as you would in the moment, you're going to exert a control over your emotional energy field. And this is the most important work of inner alchemy. Because this energy field, the personal energy field, is what qualifies everything you do and is the biggest filter, is the biggest conditioner where we project our thoughts across, you know, through it, beyond it. Through it, meaning it contains your prejudices, your uh, uh, way in which you believe life should be, your conditions, and obviously from the very centered position of what is convenient to you. So take all of this into account and work on your emotions. So we've got, we're dealing with the subject of forgiveness, but at the same time, we're talking here of conditioning your energy, of administering your energy of learning these three energy fields, which are three energy fields and work differently, and yet they're all together in the way we behave, the way, we're, the way I'm moving right now. I'm not moving just one energy field. I'm in all of them. And my focus, my personal focus of consciousness is uniting all of them. It is directing all of them, or each of them at the same time. So forgiveness is dissolving the imprint of prejudice, of violence, veiled violence. You know, these holier-than-thou people who believe in the vengeance of the Lord. Um, we're, we're, we're dissolving that. Forgiveness is recreating reality the way that you know your integrity, it should be. And it works on all levels of the mind as well. It works on the thoughts behind the thoughts. 
Now, as we're here together with the advanced group, we're still working on this after years and years and years of hearing about introspection. Because we forget, we go into the robot, we go into the convenience, we go into the comfort, we go into the impressions of everything that surrounds us. Now we may have all the best intentions of the world, but if we don't practice our inner alchemy postures, and here we go again, what's the little word I'm going to use? <laughs> the Lord said to me this morning, don't mention alignment again, please. <laughs> okay, we do that. That assures that we are connected with the sources of consciousness and with the sources of matter. So we again and again go there, but we don't stop there. We visualize and feel ourselves inside a field, which is transparent, but it is diamond hard. We call that the tube of light. Just get used to visualizing it. Everything that we think creates a photograph. This is what the Akashic Records are. So learn to photograph your protection and learn to photograph another thing, the violet flame, a healing flame, goodwill, wherever you go, in the subway, in the buses, as you're walking down the streets, in the middle of the countryside, because the plants and animals can use a lot of goodwill too. They're absorbing a lot of our stuff. So I think I've covered the subject of forgiveness. Is there any point I've left out, guys? Anything else that could be brought up here in relation to this and to our work at the moment? Got it? We were talking this morning of uh, another aspect of forgiveness and how when you get to a higher perspective, the idea of forgiveness is in a sense, no longer needed because the causes are not felt as a personal uh, grief. So the idea of forgiveness is only held while you are um, with the, 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 this grief. Once you look uh, from this higher perspective, yeah. it, it, you think, it's interesting that you've used the word grief to describe uh, for, uh, unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Grief, you've used the word grief. Now it's interesting because there is grief behind anger. There is grief behind indignation. It's like indignation gives us the courage and the energy to cover the vulnerability of grief. But grief is the source of it. And of course, you affect yourself as much as you do everyone around you. And this forgiveness also has to do for yourself. Obviously, I've been using an example with other people and circumstances, but it has everything to do with yourself and your daily practice of going over your actions and the things that you don't see, the things that you do to people, uh, the thoughts that you have, even fleeting thoughts that are a violence to the environment. Just here, you blanket a line and center yourself and as you said in this place of centering there is no need to think of forgiveness you are forgiveness because our nature is freedom that's the opposite of forgiveness freedom unforgiveness binds it binds into a concept that hurts, that limits, hurts in many ways. Either you or you've got the ball here for somebody that you're kind of ready to throw it at. It binds. So the process of release frees. It frees that child molester, which I think is the worst crime in the world. I think we all agree. The the the. the the torture of animals, it frees them to become aware. There's a, another interesting point with forgiveness is that as long as you hold the image of somebody, 
Let's say you did me some wrong. If I keep looking at you and remembering of the wrong that you did me, I'm not forgiving you. So it has a lot to do with work on your memory as well. Giving the other person an opportunity. For example, many of you I have, I have uh, reprimanded and called your attention. It's part of my style. And sometimes you look at me like a whipped dog, you know, with a tail between its legs. It I know I did wrong, like a little kid looking at his mom, you know, until mom shows him, transmits to him, more through being than through words, that I love you. So um, your reaction, what you evoke in other people is also a result of what you do. So look at other people's reactions. Feel them. You are responsible. Nobody wants to hear that. Mm -hmm. It's a drag. We're free, we've got to enjoy ourselves. This is kind of the slogan, especially of our time. Well, I'm sorry, we are not. We're only free inside. When we are free of our own prejudices, our own reactions, our own self-centeredness and our own irresponsibility and comfort. So with one hand I'm saying, wake up. With the other hand I'm saying, it's a mystery, it's a delight, it is majestic, be free. Okay, thank you.